so again, you know, I just threw this together so we'd have um, some framework for starting discussions. So essentially, the point today as a workshop is not necessarily making any decisions. In fact, as council members, we cannot. Uh, Mary Lou is not able to be here. Apparently, she's in the air today. So the idea is just basically to brainstorm some ideas, you know, some thoughts about what's happened to date and where we sit, and then, you know, possible solutions. Um, so without further ado, unless somebody has something they want to have opening remarks sort of thing, um, I'm glad we got to meet Dick. If he'd like to say a few words, that's that's fine as well. Um, Tim, would that be appropriate or? Yeah, absolutely. Jack, if you're available to speak, please introduce yourself to the group. I think he's on mute right now. There you oh, go. There you go. I'm back. I'm back. Here you go. Hello. Hey, my name is Dick McNamee. I've been uh, uh, around Long Beach for about 25 years. Uh, I've been a Long Beach member for 25 years, formerly on the board, um, CPA. Uh, have it, I was Long Beach treasurer for nine years. Most recently, president for three. Yay, I'm done. Um, and um, I've known Tim for, again, 25 years. And he asked me that, given the uh, sort of turnover, to help him out. And given his lack of having uh, a significant accounting background, is that fair to say, Tim? Like well, any you accounting already, background? You already said it, Dick. But uh, yeah. I, I've, I've managed it. I've managed P and Ls uh, for hundreds of millions of dollars for Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Wintrust, Fifth Third. So I do have some accounting background and organizational abilities. I've managed uh, teams of people in my past thirty years. So uh, you know, a CPA type uh, accounting abilities, not really, but you know, certainly able and willing to learn, and fortunately have good people like you, Mr. McNamee, that can help me and uh, Bill DeFuniak um, as well, so. Dick, Dick, did I understand you to say you were our town treasurer for a while? No, no, Long no, Beach, Long Beach. The Club. Club. Oh, the Club, Beach, okay. Club, John. Yeah. Gotcha, okay, I misunderstood, sorry. Um, yeah, municipal accounting, as I've learned in the couple of years I've been involved is, is a, is a uh, fairly complicated uh, master. Um, so what I tried to do here, again, is just kind of give us a little framework and, and, again, no decisions being made. So in terms of history, some of the things that concerned, you know, those of us that came on uh, a couple of years ago in this last election was that, you know, we had some audit issues, nothing so serious that they, you know, couldn't form an opinion, but they had some things that they were concerned about. Um, I'm told that it was, you know, multiple audits with similar things. Some of the checks and balances, some of them are very simple and bill corrected, I think all of it or most of it. Um, you know, things like two people looking at things, kind of a voucher system, the way I look at it, in my elementary accounting brain. But so there are some things that we, we just have to pay attention to. So that when I think there's a new audit coming in, is there not, Bill, this year? Yes. Yeah, there will be. I, for some reason or other, when I got here, we only we had audits every four years. So I got here in 2012 and we didn't have an audit till 2015, which was the 2011, which was my predecessor, and then my 12, 13, and 14. But then it got to two years, and uh, now for whatever reason, I'm, I'm not sure whether it was uh, whether it's because we're SRFing. I thought they had difficulty with um, uh, with staffing and everything, and I thought places our size were going to be were going to be every other year. But um, that may be the case. So the big difference when we talk about audits I think we need to con be con just consider is that we used to have the audits where they would come into the town hall and uh, uh, and we would just provide boxes of bankers boxes and they would dig in and then ask for another bankers box but the last audit that we had because of and the way our training has changed and everything else is uh, and it may not ever change is it's it's all kind of a uh, remote virtual so so they just ask for files like for example i will probably have, and i'll show tim how to do that or dick um you know we just probably need to we do a a, a 500 or 1400 page uh, detail ledger which we don't have to print but we will make a file and then we just send that down to the audit people and they fiddle over it and then they'll ask for individual pieces and things like that so so just a little different uh, dynamic than, um, uh, than than that. But otherwise, than yeah, that, when they when they finished up the uh, audits, they had a council 
still had to be involved in the exit interview. This is more for Tim and Dick's benefit than anybody else's, yeah, yeah. everybody else yeah. knows. But so when we were involved in that exit interview, she did state that they were going to start doing an, or their intent was to do annual audits, not just of our town, but I think everywhere they were beefing up their staff and trying to do more auditing. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially then, you know, in terms of the, some of the things that we had on the audits, I think we've made good progress from what Bill's telling us. Uh, there may be still some things we need to be concerned about. I know, Bill, you've been agonizing over some bank reconciliations last weekend. And I think from what I understand, we're, we're, we were in arrears on bank reconciliations going back yes. quite a bit this past year. And I think that was one of the things that SBOA was concerned about in those audits. So we do have that hanging over our head. I think, you know, I, I always worry about three strikes and you're out. We had two audits with some similar comments. So we want to make sure this next one doesn't have the same issues. Just so for Tim and, and Dick's benefit, um, you know, it cost us almost 20000 in SBOA audit fees. I don't know if that's only because of the water issues we had. We had some issues with a little bit of thievery and, and some other accounting issues at the water department. So I know we've made some progress on that, but we essentially, I guess the way I look at life, we, we kind of changed that construct. The water department is now part of the council rather than its own entity in terms of accounting. And I know there was some questions about who was responsible for their accounting. I think Bill, you know, didn't always feel like he was getting everything he needed, or I don't know if that's too strong a statement, but maybe Bill, you could fill us in on that. But essentially, I think we have to realize that our responsibility, the group that we're talking to today is responsible for everything, meaning the water and the town accounts. They're no longer bifurcated. Uh, we all, they also talked about a capital inventory, a, a quick capital plan on here. We actually have a good capital plan in place right now, but they mentioned a capital inventory. That's a little more of a long-term project. I know the water department shows some capital inventory on their balance sheet. The town does not. At some point, we may want to do that. Um, so that's the history. Does anybody else have any, any comments? Yeah, let, me, let me just comment on that. You know, this is something that I, uh, my predecessor, promise to do it and I promise to do it and we haven't done it. I have talked to Carl Sender about that and what we really need to do is have somebody who understands just the, who just goes through and physically counts all of our our uh, items and, and everything and we do need a capital asset plan and I think that's something that we can undertake. I think we've got the finances to do it but it's going to cost some money but I think we need to do it. Then, it, then the updating of it our software allows us to have a capital asset plan um, for the town, and we uh, it just needs it needs somebody to spend the money to do it. I just don't see Tim having the time to do it right away. He he should just be overseeing it, and that's that's what. So that's that's a piece of the accounting thing that we Tim, need. Tim, I know you just bounced off and bounced back in, so I just want to make sure you kind of followed us there. We're running through the history on this agenda. And we talked about bank reconciliations being one of the things. Were you in there for that? Did you hear that part? Oh, you're muted again, Tim. You're, you're muted again, Tim. Yes, sir. I heard it. I just had to change computers real quick, but I did hear it. Oh, okay. No problem. So the Watertown accounts, you got that part. Yep. And then the capital inventory is is what Bill was just expounding on. So we, would, would you mind repeating the water uh, part? I, 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 I had a question on that. Okay. So essentially, there was there has always been, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, the assumption was that the water was a utility separate from the town council in terms of the finances and the accounting. We've kind of corrected that uh, earlier in the year. We decided to uh, change the construction of that, change the construct of the water board. They're an advisory committee now, and the responsibility for the accounting and the finances all falls to the council now. Okay, that that was one thing I thought we should address at some point, and I, I I don't believe I'm prepared to tackle that just yet. But my if the town clerk treasurer office is responsible for uh, receiving and caring for all town money and paying the money out, um, is that not town money, and does that not fall under the responsibility of the town clerk's office, as um, according to IC 36-5-6-6, powers and duties of clerk? Yeah. It's, your, it's your responsibility to keep track, and then you report to the council. That's correct. Okay. So including, uh, including the water, Tim, is what we're trying to stress. Yeah. 
used to be the water was kind of felt to be separate. And Bill kind of felt that that wasn't really under his purview. That's been changed now, and it is under your purview and the town council's purview. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, under my purview is what I had yeah. here. Yeah. So, like, so th as far as the SBOA audits, you know, we're under the gun with the SBOA. We've we've been audited twice. We've had similar complaints from them. Uh, I guess I want to be sure that with this transition in the clerk's office that with the town council has continued to be kept updated as to where we're at with the um, concerns that the SBOA had. Uh, I think Bill had been trying to do that, but I want to be sure that the ball doesn't get dropped there because the last thing we want is for the SBOA to come in with the same, same complaints they had before. And our only defense is, well, we have a new town clerk now. So we need to be sure that there's a smooth transition with that and that the council is kept updated as to where we're at in terms of correcting the deficiencies the SBOA had. Hey, this is Dick. I went online and um, looked up SBOA, didn't know what it was, I do now. And I see the report from Long Beach, at least from uh, 2019. Do you, can um, someone send the notes um, regarding the audit where they, they identified maybe these weaknesses or, you know, deficiencies that, so I can at least see them because it's, it's clearly not included on the audit report that's published online. Yep. Bill, you have that information? Yes, I will get that to you, Dick. Great. So, Thank you. Yeah. Bill, just send it to me, please, and I'll get it to Dick. And yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah, suffice it to say, Dick, the, you know, again, the two strikes, three strikes, you're out sort of thing. We just, we're just a little nervous about having similar notes this time around. So it's, it's a bit of a slap on the wrist. It's not like they said, Hey, you're in deep trouble. Right. It's just, it's not malfeasance. Don't, don't, I don't want to overstress it, but no, no, no. I'm looking at the report. So you got a clean you know, opinion. So it's just a matter of, there must've been some background notes in there. Yeah. There you go. And again, we it cost us almost 20 grand on, on audit fees from the SBOA because of some of the issues, mostly in the water department. That was about 16,000 of that. Um, issues, again, uh, if there's no more comments on history or questions on history, we'll move on to some of the issues. And again, the, the thought today is, is not, you know, not to recreate history, not to um, call anybody on the carpet. Essentially, it's just to start off fresh, just, you know, review some things that we have concerns about and, and try to brainstorm today as much as anything. Accountability and responsibility, I think it's been a little confusing. We, we tossed out a organizational chart first draft. I think everybody received that. Um, I've already been told that there are some things that we need to correct on there, particularly Tim, in relation to you know your responsibilities versus let's say the accounting manager slot that I threw in there. So we can talk about how to make that better or however we construct that later, including Dick and some of the other things that we're doing. But right now, I just wanted to make sure that you know Deanna is assistant or, or deputy currently. Um, your your Dick is going to be a deputy. We need to make sure that everybody understands, you know, who reports to who, who's responsible for what, those kinds of things. And that we're not going to solve that this morning, but it's something that people have comments now. We can knock it around. I'm just going to run through this whole list and then we can just open it up for general discussion. Communication, you know, in a small group, you would think that communication would not be a problem. But from what we hear from various employees and sometimes between the council and the clerk's office or you know, the water department and the clerk's office, whatever. We just want to make sure that we're as clean as we can be with communication channels. Um, there, there has to be a, a modicum of trust between or, you know, between groups in this, in this town. We're starting off fresh now and hopefully we can be positive with that. Um, sometimes people tend to listen to water cooler information or, you know, back, back door sorts of communication. I think I try to be direct and I think if everybody can try to be direct, that'll help. Um, new clerk and Tim, obviously, you know, it, it's a brand new position for you. It, it's, it's encouraging to hear that uh, Dick will be involved as a CPA. Um, I have no idea what your intent is as far as what you want to tackle in terms of the transactional stuff on a daily basis. We need to kind of hammer those kinds of things out over time. Um, and again, we can, we can open that up with the discussion. We already hit on the SBOA audit. That's fine. Systems wise, I know there was some deficits in the, in the software that were expressed by some of the town employees over time. I think we've done some work with the Civic, which is the vendor. Um, there may be some more training that needs to go on, but in terms of systems, I think it's it's time for kind of a fresh look. We get down to solutions, we'll talk about what we're proposing maybe to do that. And then procedures as well, uh, back to the trust, checks and balances and that kind of thing. And then the other big elephant in the room is by summer, we need to be hammering that 2023 budget out 
Bill can explain to you, Tim, there's some very strict things in Dick as well relative to the submission of that information. It's it's kind of a kind of a complicated operation to get that information into what's called gateway, which is the the, the state um, doorstep, so to speak. You've got to get that into that that um, that place. So those are those are the things that I thought were issues. If anybody else has anything else they want to throw in there in terms of brainstorming for issues, uh, yeah, that. I'd like to, I'd like to talk about the the systems. Uh, We've got a scheduled training, and I, you know, I want I want as many people in as I can, and and a limited number of people in as I can, because some the one of the problems with training is when we have training with the systems, with the civic systems, you know, too many people getting in is you know just confuses for those who are really going to have to enter data. But right now we have starting on on Tuesday afternoon from one to five is civic is is providing accounts payable training and uh and that's going to be so i'm uh, you know i'm hoping tim can make it and and if dick can make it too that'd be great but basically that's our you know our billing uh paying our bills uh on wednesday and thursday it's um i think i might have picked one more day than they have scheduled wednesday and thursday it's payroll and uh, uh one to five central time again for that and I, I i i'm blanking on the the general ledger then is is uh, is either the next week or the week after and i have to have that again always in the one to five afternoons i think it's going to be tuesday through thursday and uh, that that's going to be uh the the general ledger the um, uh, cash receiving and uh and all of those parts of the functions are all going to be the training and at one point in time we had discussed um, uh, having an outside vendor do the payroll. And what I what I've researched the, the money wouldn't bother me, but what I've researched is most of the people who use the outside vendor for payroll do it because they don't want to do the 941 quarterly reports and they don't want to do the W twos and and the uh, and the files to the to the state and to the feds. And neither one of those are very difficult to do. So you still have to do all the entry data to send it to ADP or whoever is going to be the vendor. So my suggestion would be, unless that becomes a problem for Tim downstream, uh, we're still going to have to do exactly the same amount of work of taking the timesheets uh, from the from the employees and entering that data. I don't think you're going to benefit any by changing that. And right now it runs fairly seamlessly with everybody. We don't have to print any checks anymore. We just send everything goes to ACH. I think I, I printed one check last year because there was one of the park uh, kids could not get a bank, get, get a, a checking or a savings account. And so he got a physical check. And we still have a, a whole bunch of checks there. So in any event. But the system, so the systems training, I think the big thing is I'm, I want Tim to get as much knowledge of that and i'm sure he does too um so if he can then pass it to somebody else uh, long term he knows exactly what's going on with the with each one of those systems yep so let me add real quickly i've scheduled myself to be available for the training next week so thank you for setting that up i look forward to it um i sat in with bill and did payroll yesterday i didn't find it overly complicated there are some nuances but i think it's um relatively easy to get and uh, at one point in my past life, I did work for ADP selling payroll systems. So um, I'll say, I'll, I mean, I'll tell you that from what I know about ADP, you're right, Bill, you're probably doing as much work as we do now, if not more, by employing them to handle the payroll. Yeah, I mean, basically what, what Tim did, he did it all himself. I watched, but I didn't, I didn't yell or anything at him. And he's, and all, you know, when we, when we wanted to pay everybody, he he hit a button and said go, and it made a file. And then he went on the we went on the Horizon Bank website and 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 updated that file. And and if God is good, I'm going to get a paycheck tomorrow morning. <laughs> you, you, you didn't yell, you didn't yell, but I thought the whip was a little over the top. <laughs> okay, so in terms of issues, is there anything else anybody wants to throw up there for an issue that they've got a concern about? Well, I, if I, again, my, my um, with my very, very limited experience there so far, um, I do 
think that we need, and John, I think you already said it, that uh, that org chart can be discussed. Um, but I think it might be problematic to have the accounting manager report directly to the town council and not to the town clerk. Yeah, I agree. I was kind of, uh, I was corrected in my uh, assumptions there. So yeah, we can make that change. Not a, not a problem at all. In fact, we don't even have to call somebody an accounting manager, but we can talk about these solutions now. If somebody has another issue per se, otherwise we'll move on to some of these suggested solutions and things. Sounds and again, good. we're not making this decision. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Did I hear yeah. somebody? No, I just said I agree. Sounds good. Let's move on. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, yes. Can, can I make a suggestion just for the knowledge of everyone that's on this meeting this morning? The uh, clerks that are with us this morning, um, you know, from Helen, Deanna, and Lynn, could we just get a few minutes from each of them to kind of just give us a brief synopsis of some of their roles currently when it comes to the finances of the town? Not that they deal with building permits or anything else, but just to give all of us a, a, a little idea of what they handle on a daily basis for accounts receivable, payable. Would that be all right? Yeah, that's fine with me. Um, I, I do want to caution. I've, some of us are under some time frame, so we need to kind of keep it moving. Yeah, uh, I think just like take two, two minutes, yep. maybe just briefly go over it, maybe starting with uh, Deanna, then to Lynn, and then to Helen. Deanna, I, if you're muted, I don't, I'm trying to see you there. Oh, I don't okay. Hear you. I, don't. I, didn't, I didn't know if you were ready. Um, well, from day to day, what I've done for 17 years that I've been there, um, I usually take in the money, whether it's police citations or, you know, um, tenant rent from the community center or whatever. But I usually take in all the money. Um, Bill is advised what has come in. He sees it and then it's kept in his office each day until he uh, wants a deposit prepped to be entered into the system. So then I prep the deposit, total the checks that will go in, he enters those into the deposit, and then when the system balance balances to the tape that I've run, um, I do prep the deposit ticket where then he either takes it to the bank or then I do. There's also a petty cash of about $200 that's kept in Bill's office. That is usually used if someone has to run uh, certified mails to the post office or somebody from the community center needs something real quick. Uh, when that gets down under about $100, I reconcile that, uh, total the receipts, and then uh, prepare like an invoice for reimbursement. Bill pays that when he pays the payables. One of us will go to the bank we cash that and then the petty cash is back to $200. So that's all in his office. Um, I also keep the vendors uh, balances and files um, reconciled when statements come from them. If there's discrepancies with what has been paid to them, I clean that up over the phone. That way uh, when Bill wants to write checks, I prep all the invoices through the system and make sure it hasn't been double paid or whatever. Um, then he enters payables. He cuts the checks. They come back to me. I um, ready them for the mail. And then he will tell me what he wants sent in the mail or what has to be kept before a council meeting approval. And then it would go out after a council meeting. Then the other thing I've always done is balance the bank recs for the town um, this is the, the first year um, with a lot of different things coming about that I was not able to keep up with it. But normally I balance the bank recs for the town and then they go to Bill. Um, he approves everything and before he closes out that month and advances the next month in the system. Um, this was the first time, but I've gone back and I'm pretty much done with bank recs. Um, I've got two months yet to do for 2021 and then that will be done. Um, but normally between me and Bill, I do everything pretty much to prep for him and then he puts his initials on it. That's it for me anyway. Thanks, Deanna. Um, sure. I know Lynn's on. I'm unmuting. I do the accounts receivable for the water department, which basically is collecting all the checks that come in either in our payment box out front of town hall or through the USPS. 
And anyone who walks in now that town halls open again, sometimes people come in person to pay their bills. So I collect those monies, open up the envelopes, stamp them um, for deposit only immediately. And then when I enter them into cash receiving after I've done um, the stack of checks that are going to go out in any particular uh, bundle, I'll run the paperwork for that and then I go to the bank. And that's absolutely the end of my accounts receivable. So I take in the checks, record them, and take them to the bank. Lynn, you also do all the um, sending out invoices and so forth. Right, I send out the invoices, yes. I send out the water bills every month. And, and do you handle the payments for the water department in terms of invoicing for vendors and that sort of thing as well? I had done that before we hired Helen. Okay. And John, that's when we divided it into accounts receivable position and accounts payable position and helping with the accounts payable person on the AR. Got it. Okay. Is, I think Helen's here somewhere. Do you, Helen, do you want to? Yep. Okay. Okay, Helen Sheridan. I am a CPA too. I have extensive experience in public accounting um, and in fund accounting and government accounting from the federal government on down. Um, basically retired from um, that side of my career. And I do accounts payable there, reconciliations. I've assisted on the town side with reconciliations. Um, there's, from my experience, there's, a, um, I understand the compliance rules. I'm big into systems. I've installed systems, never worked with Civic, but I've worked with Black Mountain, Black Ball, Sage, and uh, Quick, Quicken has a product out there, but it's for a smaller group. Um, I've built financial statements, I've built cost sheets, and I've built all types of stuff for organizations so they could control um, and get a better view of what's going on. Um, that's basically what I've been doing, just do the payables, I do have some suggestions to offer to the group and you can take it from there. Okay, great. So right now, just basically the, as far as what we're doing for the town, you're helping Bill on some things and then doing your, what yep. basically you got hired into mm -hmm. for the- And Bill trained me to do payroll too. Okay. Excuse Good. me. Also, Helen, you do the bank recs for the water department. Right. I said bank recs for them and for, I've been helping out with Bill and Deanna. Okay. Um, is there anybody else then, Mark, that we need to hear from? No, I, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. No, I think that was good. So right now then, unless somebody else has another issue to interject, I would say we'd probably just knock around a few. And again, I don't think we want to dive too deeply into solutions this morning, other than to say we think we have some areas that probably need some attention. Mm -hmm. Everything from, you know, Tim, and Dick's um, learning curve and, you know, how we orchestrate ourselves and then it, defining that org chart better and then roles for people. Um, as far as I'm concerned, nobody's going anywhere. I think we just keep everybody involved that's already involved uh, with the exception of Dick coming on board. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. This accounting manager slot that I threw in there, I, I, you know, again, I was a little mistaken in doing that, but I also think from a transactional standpoint, and, and I think Dick, you and, and Tim need to inform us about who's gonna handle day-to-day -day transactions. Tim, I don't know what your thoughts were on that. If, if you want, I'm assuming we could expand Helen's role somewhat to help with some of those kinds of things, unless Dick's involved. I, I have no idea what your thoughts are. Yeah, well, I will be uh, available every day there, at least in the very near term future and quite possibly long term future. There's a lot that goes on there that I understand I have to figure out. Dick is, uh, going to play a big role in things but we have not frankly gotten together yet to identify exactly um how involved he will be we um are certainly grateful that he's available and and uh, very much looking forward to working with him but he and i have to have a uh get together on that and uh same with helen i've had the pleasure of meeting her a couple times and uh 
certainly qualified well, but probably way overqualified. And, um, you know, I think my official, well, my official start date is Friday at 12.01. So um, Helen and I will spend time together as well. Deanna has been uh, super helpful as as Chiefs with Beck. And uh, it, it'll be a transition for sure, but I'm, I'm looking forward to um, making it a successful one. Okay, and as we progress through, we can adjust that chart somewhere along the line. That's fine. Uh, the next one is sender involvement, and I think, um, you know, from our perspective, the guy I, again, I've only been around a couple of years, and uh, you know, Mike Johnstone being a banker, he and I have kind of the, the duties in the budget and finance. Although, um, you know, the Bob LeMay as town council president is intimately involved as well, but and, as is Helen and I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Laurel and uh, Joe and some of the other members of the budget and finance group, but. Essentially, I think, you know, we've leaned on Sender a little more as Bill has kind of transitioned closer and closer to his well-deserved retirement. So I think we all are under the impression, at least on our side, Tim, maybe you want to weigh in at some point, but I think it may be beneficial for Sender's group to be more involved, at least in the short term. Um, I know municipal accounting is probably a little bit foreign to both you and Dick. And I think if we can keep him involved, I, I, I would advocate for a deep, what I'd call a deep dive, maybe a 30, 60, whatever, 90 day involvement with maybe a periodic, if it's a couple of days a week or you know, more or less, or whatever. But I think we've already kind of front loaded him a little bit. I think that might be beneficial for everybody concerned. And then if we want to keep him and that, you know, he's, he's always been involved with major statement assembly and that sort of thing. But while you learn, maybe that, that would be, that'd be my suggestion anyway. Well, I, I, I agree completely. May I, may I offer that I, I, I had a conversation with Carl yesterday, Carl Sender yesterday, and I told him about the training that is ongoing. And um, uh, he has an individual uh, who's who's a, a, a got municipal experience. He's got a degree in accounting from Indiana University. I think he's going to only cost us about eighty or ninety dollars an hour. And so what we're talking about is is four times eighty or four times ninety. Uh, for 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 the uh, Tuesday, and my sense is he may he may the the uh, the payroll may not be something that he can provide in because it's not really an accounting function. The accounting function is I mean there is accounting that comes out of payroll, but uh, then the training in the in the uh, general ledger. And my suggestion would be I mean we've we're we're spending eight to ten thousand dollars to. To help to help with our our MS4, so spending a few thousand dollars to make sure that we get a little bit more background in that. And if Tim says, "Gee, that's great," but I got such a grasp with that, I don't need Carl. That's fine. But my uh, my feeling on it is, the more the merrier. And I think it would be beneficial to have have him sit in on the classes. Carl has already told me that if Trista, who's you know who's a full CPA and has been a dynamo for me sits in he will not even charge us for that time so i think he wants to help with this transition so tim that's you know that's also that's your call along with the council but my f feeling would be it's it's a worthy expenditure to make sure if we don't need them that's great but i think i'd rather see that so i think i think the council is going to go along with that but well, I, I, I agree with the recommendation. I think right now we, we might be um, headed toward uh, a little overboard with the more the merrier, but let's see that we get things in order and then we can pare down as needed. And Tim, I, I would I would also suggest that, you know, if sender's not going to be cheap, uh, one thing to consider would be to have sender involved early on, maybe see what Helen can do because Helen is going to be less expensive and certainly has a lot of expertise. And maybe there could be a transition there mm -hmm. as you get more comfortable with Helen that she could help you out and we could kind of transition away from Sender's involvement yeah. and maybe more to Helen's if that if that's how that works. For sure. Yeah. And and and, and hopefully with the addition of Mr. McNamee who might be trying to talk right now but is muted, that 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 would certainly be helpful. Yeah, we'll just, again, the role definition is going to be kind of critical over time. Uh, I don't think we need to tackle that this morning, but Tim, you'll just have to let us know how it works and what you want to see. I, I might suggest just to solve these things in a more concrete fashion that we get sender whatever day that we can all meet again. 
I think we, I don't know if we need to hold council or if we have the budget and finance guys, maybe Mike can weigh in on that, but at a minimum, we ought to have the budget and finance represented and, and then Tim, your office with whoever you need involved and then sender. And then we kind of get this framework tightened up a little bit about roles and assumption or uh, uh, responsibility. Very good, I agree. Maybe by the end of this meeting, we can pick a date or you know makes a couple of suggestions and we can run them by Carl. Um, chain of command that follows that same thing. Capital plan is kind of underway already. Um, Tim, you'll, you'll get up to speed on that over time. It's, there's, it's kind of a budget and finance sort of a thing. It's kind of been implemented already and approved with the council. So over time, we're trying to kind of look at capital a little differently than we have in the past. Sometimes we get kind of a, uh, I don't know what the right way to put it, but sometimes we got, you know, we'd wait for an emergency and then do something. Whereas I think now we've got a forward looking look at, hey, all the different departments have capital needs. What are we going to do about it in the future? How are we going to finance them? So we've, we've kind of gotten our arms wrapped around that. You'll have to get yourself familiar with it. But essentially, the big expenditures will be coming back to the council in each case. But, you know, I think it's something you want to get familiar with. Uh, monthly reporting is kind of a critical one. Uh, Mike asked Sender to come up with kind of a special report that includes every all the different accounts. And Bill's done a good job. He basically just doesn't want to burden us with too much on our monthly basis. He throws critical accounts, things like general, uh, the general account, some of the other ones that had movement during the month, but it's been good. We've, we've actually thrown budget column in there now so we can see where we're at with variances, which is really what I think Mike and I am after as far as budget and finance. You provide us with monthly reports that show variances and then we can say, hey, where, what's up with this? What's up with that kind of a thing? Rather than us delving into the details every month, but I, I'm sure that's your mindset too, I'm imagining. Yep. So that's really all I had. I, I I wouldn't mind if we can set another date or give ideas about what weeks people are available. It'd be nice. And again, I, we're open to any kind of general discussion this morning, but I'd, I'd offer up that we ought to be back together with Sender sometime in the next couple of weeks, unless you have some other thoughts, Tim, or anybody. You know, there's a, a as, as I think you pointed out, John, there's a, a, a big transition, a lot to get my arms around, and I would like to spend time with Dick and Helen and Sender attend the training this week and uh then i think i would like to recall a meeting in the next couple of weeks but i don't know that i would set the date just yet if that's okay that's fine you've got everybody's emails and uh hopefully the it guy's going to have everybody on town email shortly because just having your personal email involved is a total pain in the butt Tinsky. okay um any other I general do, comments i do have town email i don't know if you received my emails but I'm, i do have town email now yeah, we had you wrong. We, you were missing an H in Long Beach for a little while, but we still- I know. I, I think I hit reply all and added the wrong address, so my fault, but hopefully it's corrected now. No, we're good. Yeah, we're good. I think I, I'm getting stuff from you, and I appreciate you kicking that test one back because I was utterly confused that one morning when I couldn't get you. But anyway, okay. The one, the one advantage that that you're going to have, Tim and Dick and, and Helen, and, and even if I'm helping out at this, is we don't, you know, this open door thing does not apply so the council has to get all tangled up in the fact that only two people can come to a meeting because if it's not public or it's not announced and everything else, and uh, you have some freedom to meet with sender without having a without having a, a, a you know a federal uh, opinion and everything else. So I think it's it's going to make it a little easier. That's you know, and I meant to ask you that, Bill. So thank you for adding that. That's right. That's right. That's all I've got on the agenda. If anybody else has any comments to make or anything they want to talk about. Yeah, Tim, so just, just to further define that so we don't screw up in the future, anytime we have a meeting with more than two members of the town council, it needs to be posted at the town center and posted with the news dispatch. Yeah, And, uh, and we tend to post it on the website also, although I don't think that's mandatory. Yeah, so, and, um, and everybody can attend. So if we have we want to say something nasty about somebody else that, that we we have to have a real, we're having an executive session. So yeah, so yeah. it's so it's, and, and I and I'll also make the caution. I know you know this, Tim, but and Dick as well. Your emails, anything you send on an email is open season for anybody that wants to go grab it with a Freedom of Information Act request. So we have to be kind of civil in our emails as well. And the only time that we can have executive sessions where other people can't attend is on issues that involve personnel or legal matters. Union matters, but we don't legal. have that. Legal or personnel. I, I, I said union also counts, but we don't have any union. So. Yeah. so on occasion, I have to have an executive session about Coker because he misbehaves so often. But other than that, we're, so we're good. Okay. You're muted, Jen. 
<laughs> I think he likes it that way. But I, I say I try to behave myself, but it's difficult at times. I have to contain myself. Yeah. That's what I want to do, contain you. That's always been my mission. Well, we're trying to contain you, too, so let's be <laughs> neutral. Okay. <laughs> All right. If, if anybody else has anything else? Nope. No, thanks everybody. Right. Appreciate your time. Good good working with you. Thank you. We'll wait to hear. Yeah, we'll wait to hear from you, Tim, on the next meeting. Yes, sir. Thanks, Dick. Okay. Thank you, Dick. Bye, everybody.